Hi guys and welcome to Crazy Burger. So we were invited along as part of a Evercade Blaze Media Day at the start of July 2024 uh, and it was a great opportunity to get hands on with all the new stuff that's coming throughout this year, Evercade Alpha, the Super Pockets uh, and all the carts that are obviously still to be released at the time of this video. Uh, and obviously I couldn't say no, I was absolutely delighted when they asked. Um, I got a little bit um, extra time before and after the actual media day to talk to the, the guys at Blaze and meet all the team and it was a fantastic um, experience. It was nice to see all the people that are involved in the day-to-day -day, um, operations um, of Blaze Evercade um, and there's some really nice people there. So thanks very much guys for inviting me along. It was a great experience, great to meet everyone um, from Blaze to Funstock uh, and lots of other things beside. But yeah, we got our hands on the Evercade Alpha, the Super Pockets, um, and there was a few other media outlets there as well, but it was great to get some question and answers and service, but in this video I'm not really going to have a lot of footage, I didn't really have time to take a lot of videos, I did take some pictures, but I'm really just making this video to discuss my experience uh, and all the things that I got my hand on and maybe try and um, let you know what those products are like, what to expect, are they worth buying, that type of thing. Um, so I'll probably just start with the Evercade Alpha, um, obviously this is the um, arcade machines that are um, the tabletop countertops that I designed um, and I was actually really impressed with them uh, they, they surprised me I wasn't really a massive believer in, in getting one because down to the space uh, and the fact I probably don't need one um, but actually getting my hands on one it really surprised me how good they are um, the screen was probably the thing that popped the most to me the quality was really really cool um, and yeah we got hands on the, to see the difference between the Sanwa and the standard to be honest I thought the standard was absolutely fine the, the sort of joystick and the buttons felt absolutely fine the Sanwa obviously got a little bit more clicky and seemed a little bit uh, Maybe a little bit more responsive, I guess, but the standard was absolutely fine. Now, obviously knowing me, I had to try out um, the Thalamus collection, which was available to play on the day as well. Um, just to see what that joystick was like, perhaps playing creatures, for example, and just to see, is it possible to play those type of games? Now, it really should be, because if uh, you remember... Back in the day, you would have played C64 games with a joystick anyway, and it worked really fine. It was quite sensitive, to be honest, but um, it worked absolutely fine. Now, those Evercade Alphas will not be perfect for every cartridge, um, but there was something cool about inserting a cartridge at the bottom of that um, Evercade Alpha arcade machine, and then you can see um, the cartridge and games pop up. Um, so that pretty much worked the same way as a VS would. Um, it's the same operating system, so it'll pretty smooth operation there uh, and it was nice to get my hands on playing the um, Street Fighter games as well. I have to say overall I'm really impressed with those machines. I know they are a little bit expensive at £200 and above um, but they definitely impressed me the most out of all the things that were there uh, to play on that day. I was actually surprised because I really wasn't I was probably a little bit on the fence whether I needed one or wanted one or not but having seen them I think I definitely, definitely want one the size, they weren't as big as I expected them to be, um, so they probably won't take up as much space as you might imagine. Obviously it's not a full size arcade cabinet, it's just a really small tabletop counter machine which would work great if you have the setup at home to actually fit that in. So I think they will be quite popular. Now we also got our hands on obviously the um, Evercade uh, Thalamus cartridges and Tomb Raider but Thalamus obviously I had a quick go playing the different games uh, and they work absolutely brilliant I'm going to cover that in a separate video though um, and I'll cover through all the games I've got early access before it gets released so we can cover that uh, in a separate video but what I can say is it could well be one of the best Commodore 64 collections yet um, it's not perfect but there's some really great games on there it's also good to get a first hand experience of the Tomb Raider games and um, playing on the Evercade EXPR now the EXPRs that were on uh, the site and um, we're really just prototype versions of it It'll give you an idea what to expect that is pretty much similar to an EXP um, obviously the colour scheme is a little bit different, we've lost the HDMI out at the top um, I think it's a little vent that's now at the top of the EXPRs um, rather than the obviously the HDMI out 
um, but we have been told that they won't overheat as much as the EXP because really you could fry an egg on the EXP it overheats something awful so hopefully that won't be an issue um, it didn't really appear to be a problem on the actual prototypes either and we have been told that the battery life should be at least four to six hours maybe five to six hours and um, i think there's still some testing going on with that but it certainly is an improvement over the exp and my exp i only get about two hours battery life which is absolutely awful um and it, it's just not good enough and that's one of the big drawbacks of the that handheld for me but hopefully if we can get that four to six hours on an expr that would make a massive improvement to me and already we would be um obviously up on the original handheld and um, so that looked quite nice it is pretty much the same thing it's uh, still an exp but it's got some improvements so i'm looking forward to getting my hands on one for real but that has been delayed to the end of august um, along with the Thalamus and Tomb Raider collections. Talking of Tomb Raider collections, I did get my hands on one. I've got a sneak peek preview um, so I can't, that I can um, cover in a separate video. I'll do a more review and I'll let you know what, um, what that's like. But I can obviously tell you here that it's fantastic. It plays really well. There's been some small improvements here and there. Um, I think with this sort of light and gamma. Because I think in the original PlayStation there was a lot of dark areas that didn't... Um, obviously it was quite hard to see in a lot of those uh, sort of levels but as far as I could tell absolutely fine worked great on the d-pad uh, and all the controls were marked uh, uh, mapped out absolutely perfectly it works great on the XP and obviously on the VS as well and um, they also had a setup of the Tomb Raider collection playing on an original PlayStation so it was like the Evercade version but playing on an original um, PlayStation and side by side they had the the same sort of game but playing on the VS. Um, it was obviously it was interesting to see the the differences, and it was quite clear that the VS or Evercade version on a VS, um, the definition was clearly a lot <laughs> much improved compared to the original PlayStation because obviously that can't output. Uh, the same definition as uh, modern sort of consoles can so it definitely looked a lot better they've done the exact same with Glover as well they had some side by side comparison playing on an N64 and also playing on the VS and you could quite clearly see that on the VS it does look a lot better and um, there's certainly been improvements there so that was actually nice to see so also they had copies of to a plan 3 and data east arcade 2 um, so I got a quick chance to play those games on the EXPR. Um, I have to say the Tour Plan 3 stuff was fantastic, really impressed me. Um, and surprisingly, obviously I'm not really a big fan of those shoot 'em ups but that cart is definitely one of the best Tour Plan collections yet. I um, really enjoyed some of those games, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. And if, if you're on the fence with that, if you don't like shooters, then please don't. It's absolutely brilliant, really worth uh, purchasing. Now, Data East Arcade 2, obviously we've covered that and looked at some of the games in a previous video, but I'm really not totally convinced that that's a great collection, to be honest. There's a lot of games on there, some interesting stuff, but I'm not really sure there's anything that really blows me away. Um, so I'm still on the fence, I'm still playing through some of the games, but I'm still not completely sure. And uh, before we move on to the Super Pockets, obviously we had um, a quick sneak peek of a cart that was still to be announced at that particular time, and that was Bitmap Brothers Collection 2. So finally we have the, got the second version, uh, the second, sorry, collection of Bitmap Brothers on Evercade. Uh, and it includes, I think it's five games. I think we've got Cadavar, we've got the Cadavar um, sort of enhanced um, sort of additional DLC that was released for it. Um, we've also got a PlayStation game called Z, which is a kind of strategy uh, game, and that looked pretty cool. It was quite slow loading, right enough, that was quite notable. Um, we've also got um, Magic Pockets, finally we've got Amiga Magic Pockets on Evercade. I've been wanting that game pretty much for the last couple of years um, on Evercade. Obviously we couldn't get a, this until we got Amiga uh, onto, or the home computers onto Evercade. So we have that now, we've waited some time to get this. And we're also getting Gods as well, which is a, a massive Amiga game too. These are all quite hard, tricky games. Um, but definitely welcome. The only notable uh, sort of absence was probably Speedball 2 on the Amiga. 
Um, apparently there's maybe some licensing that are stopping us getting that version, which is a bit of a shame because that would be the best version to get. Um, but maybe we'll get a secret game added. I would love to even see the C64 version of uh, Speedball 2, but at the moment there's no Speedball 2 on the collection. But anyway, that's one to look forward to. I will cover that in a separate video. Um, but yeah, that wasn't announced that when we actually got there. So it was nice to see um, that there um, as obviously a sneak peek of what was to come. Um, also, we got the hands uh, on the Technos Super Pocket and the Atari Super Pocket. So the Technos Super Pocket had obviously Dumble Dragon running on it. Um, I didn't see any massive issues. I have been told that they have made some sort of tweaks to it. So hopefully we won't see as much slowdown as you, you would expect if you're playing Double Dragon on emulation. Um, it has some horrible slowdown, which I think is what held uh, Evercade or Blaze back from actually putting it onto the, the Technos arcade collection to begin with but i think they've made some changes hopefully it will run uh, pretty well on the super pocket and it was nice to get a hands on that it's a lovely sort of blue color and um, i think it's really really cool but i'm not really a massive fan of the techno stuff and um, what did blow me away was the atari super pocket now both colors look brilliant that wood grain getting that hands on the wood grain looked really really cool um, but the black and red one yeah the variant was also really cool. I think I'm going to have to buy both because both of them look fantastic. Um, obviously, if you haven't got your hands on the wood grain one pre-ordered yet, then you're probably going to miss out, I'm afraid, because it was limited to tw uh, 2,600 uh, copies of that. But the black and red one looks fantastic as well. And, and it's a, quite a bargain, I would say. There's 50 games on it. You can uh, switch through the games really quickly. I think they've added a little feature where you can just press the shoulder buttons and it'll zip through the, the games maybe by five or ten increments just so you can go through the, the, the sort of games a lot quicker. Um, but they look great. I played through a few of the games. <laughs> it really works fantastically well on those Super Pockets. Um, it was great to see the Lynx games that we haven't played or seen yet on Evercade, such as Warbirds. Um, I really enjoyed that. So I would definitely recommend those Super Pockets. Fantastic stuff. Um, we talked a lot. Of, we had a question and answer service as well. Um, Blaze provided uh, some lunch. Then we had a, a Q&A after that um, where we asked them some questions um, about various topics um, such as um, what large publishers are Blaze talking to? Um, obviously, try and get some sneak peek information. Why Super Pockets? Um, why not? Obviously, get relicensed carts. Um, so they provided some information uh, to that. I think it's quite interesting. You know, getting their ideas behind why they do that, and a lot of the time it's down to. I guess what, what's going to make the most money, what's more attractive to retailers, so that, there's some interesting reasons why they, they choose Super Pockets, why they're choosing the Alphas, to try to attract different audiences. Um, they did sell a lot more cartridges at the start of the year when the Super Pockets were sort of released, so there's there's definitely strategy in there. Sometimes you might look on and think it's complete madness. There's no strategy there at all, but there is reason behind some of the madness that goes on. And we also talked a lot of things um, about that's coming later in the year, um, and a little bit of a sneak peek to what's going to come um, for the rest of the year. The, you know, so I think at this point in the video, we've still got four, three or four cartridges still to be announced. Uh, a little bit of a heads up at what might happen in 2025, but none of that is set in stone, so um, we'll have to wait and see uh, with regards to that. But it was a great day, I really enjoyed it. Um, sorry I didn't take a lot more videos and pictures, I wasn't really planning to take loads of videos and pictures. Um, I was really just going to enjoy the day, it was quite a drive for me, it was six and a half, seven hours to actually drive from uh, my house to <laughs> down to Evercade. Um, but it was definitely worth it, I thoroughly enjoyed it um, and hopefully I'll get another chance to do that at some other point point but thanks very much to blaze for having us out and um, it was a great experience um and guys thanks very much for watching i'll catch you again in the next one bye for now